Welcome to the podcast, Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business by Coach James Short. This podcast is designed to help you with strategies, insights, and ways to increase sales, build and lead high-performing teams, and ultimately grow your business. Your host, James Short himself, also shares some of his secret sources on how he helps his own clients achieve business growth quickly and easily. James has been coaching those in the real estate and property industry for close to 10 years now, and his clients keep on saying, since working with James, their results have been outstanding, giving them more money, time, and fulfillment. James is offering a free strategy call to those listening to see how he can assist you to take your business to where you want to go. Simply go to jamesshort.com.au forward slash strategy and book in a time today. Now on with the show. Hi and welcome to another edition of Leading and Growing Your Real Estate and Property Business. This is Coach James Short and welcome to another edition. On today's episode, we have the amazing Jay Anderson. Now, Jay is a mover and groover within the industry. Now, let's uh, let's hear a little bit about Jay and his, his story. He first entered the Australian property market in 2010. From that point on, property investing has become an obsession to him. Love it. Jay made it his mission to learn everything there was to learn about being a successful property investor. Jay has now amassed a multi-million dollar personal property portfolio spread across a number of states. Jay's goal is to provide long-term support, solutions, and education to ensure that his clients develop a sophisticated, expansive, and prosperous portfolio. And that's why he's created Jay Anderson's Buyers Agents. Like he, These guys are the elite of the elite. And we're so honored and privileged to have Jay on today to share a bit of the insights, share a bit of his story, share about what makes his team so unique um, and how he's delivering exceptional service to his clients. So, mate, true honor and privilege. Thank you for being here today. No, thank you for having me on. It's a pleasure. Awesome, mate. That, obviously, there's a, a, a little bit of a history, but 2010, what was what was happening up until that time and what made you made the switch into property? What, what was that journey like? Uh, yeah, so as you touched on in the intro, so I bought my first investment property in 2010. Um, I guess the thing that maybe made that decision happen at the time was, to be honest, the TV shows like The Block got caught up watching all of that. <laughs> a couple of my friends had started buying property and I just kind of got hooked. So that first property we bought was a dilapidated, terrible rundown two-bedroom apartment in the middle of Potts Point. Right. So we fully renovated it. Um Post renovation, we got it revalued and went, wow, that was easy. Look at the <laughs> money we just made. So, as many people do, I came out of that first one thinking I was an expert. Um, we then spent the next probably 10 months trying to buy the next one. So, I mean, attending open for inspections every single weekend, doing what I thought was the right research at the time. So, looking at comparable sales, renovation budget, calculating post renovation values. However, we just kept missing out on properties and we weren't buying. Mm. So it was at that moment I had the light bulb go off that, you know, after feeling completely overwhelmed and beaten down that, hey, I'm not an expert and <laughs> if I want to become a successful investor, I need to learn and copy what successful investors do, right? So the professionals that these investors surround themselves with and also dedicate as much of my time, energy and resources that I could into learning absolutely everything there was about understanding how a property market works. Yep. Um, so being a very analytical person, um, I went back every year to 1970 and started having a look at median house prices, population growth data, infrastructure spending, interest rates, unemployment rates, new job creation numbers to try and see what was happening in each market at that time from a capital city point of view to see if there was any correlation between specific data and property price movements. Wow. So it literally became a full-blown obsession, um, you know, wow. seminars, courses, books, yep. all the rest yep. of it, and started trying to surround myself with these like-minded investors and – from that point on, I started to build my A team. Great. So I aligned myself with a property-focused accountant, a financial planner, mortgage broker, 
And the other profession that kept coming up with these investors was buyer's agents. So from that point on, I worked closely with buyer's agents for my next personal five purchases. And by then, the bug had well and truly got me. (laughs) Um, And then I started building a commercial portfolio as well, in addition to the resi portfolio. Um, But I guess the turning point was from about 2012 onwards, it was family, friends, colleagues that were seeing what I was doing with building my portfolio. So slowly, one by one, they started approaching me with, I guess, general questions and guidance on how and where to start in building a portfolio. So I started sharing the markets I was looking at, um, introducing them to the different professionals I was using and started working closely with them, holding their hand, I guess, um, to help them buy the first property and then build a portfolio. And then from then onwards, it was basically turning that passion into a career. So I went and completed the necessary courses, obtained the licenses and yeah, the rest is history. Fantastic. That's, I mean, I love that journey because from a, a, a personal passion and, and obviously learning and growing and wanted to, to succeed, you've now walked that journey from clients' viewpoints, right? And you've, you've gone through that whole journey and now you go, cool, now I can add further value because I've experienced, I've got all the scars, I've got everything that comes with the journey to share with clients, to share how they can also grow their, their, their portfolio. So, so give us a snapshot of, of where you're at right now. You've got obviously an amazing business that you're running. Tell us a little bit about that and, and the types of clients that you're working with. Yeah, so JNS and Property, um, we're an independent buyer's agency and we really specialize in acquiring high-performing residential and commercial properties in the emerging markets around the nation. So we're not geographically bound. We're really looking at you know where these emerging markets are. On the the residential side, we're buying both investment and owner-occupier stuff, and that has ranged from as little as three hundred thousand up to in excess of four million. Yep. Um, on the residential investment side, I personally like to focus on properties with multiple points of upside potential. Right. So things like renovation, where we can manufacture some equity to help leap into the next purchase, might be secondary dwelling potential. Um, land subdivision, future development potential. Um, so like the stuff we're buying in Southeast Queensland market at the moment, a lot of that's been rezoned where we can actually build apartments up to 21 metres on. Now, we're not going to do that right now, but it's nice to have that card in your back pocket totally. for the future. Um, and other things like uh, strata titling. So it might be a mixed-use premises where we can look at potentially strata titling it and selling off some of the resi. Um, on the commercial side, strong focus in accommodation and medical assets. So the accommodation side, specifically motels, my family's been buying and selling motels since the 50s. So so we know and understand that market very well and we're investing in that market. Through the blood. Through the blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and the motels are great, right? So we're buying them with a net yields of 8 to 9%. You know, they're 30-year leases, including all the options. Um, yep. In most cases, tenant pays 100% of outgoings, including landlords, land tax. You know, so they're great long-term solid investments. Um, and the other one, quickly touch on, I guess, is the medical stuff. Um, I really like the medical and healthcare properties. So again, net yields of around kind of six to eight percent, sometimes even higher is achievable. Um, yep. Medical assets attract anchor tenants. You know, they've got expensive fit out costs. You think of a dentist practice or whatever it may be, expensive fit out costs, and they're very location based businesses. So this helps to ensure the longevity of a tenant within a single location. Mm, totally, totally. So obviously, the journey that you've had, you've had obviously some some great times, maybe some challenging times. Uh, I'd like to go a little bit personal in relation to the challenging times because obviously coming through those challenging times, which you are now, you look back and you go, wow, there's some, some amazing lessons that I've had and I can take that now into the future. What were some of those challenges that you've come through the other side that have really shaped you, but obviously going through the time was crap, but have really shaped you on your, on your journey? I guess, to be honest, it's probably the time right now. You know, the the market correction and all the negative media around Sydney and property market and the Sydney and Melbourne property market, um, you know, that coupled with 
tight lending environment and the talks of proposed changes to negative gearing, you know, it's made everyone pretty spooked when it comes to property. So it's quite a challenging time now. Yep. However, on the flip side of that, you know, in times of doom and gloom, I'm a firm believer that in any industry, um, there's real opportunity for businesses to set themselves up and put things in place to ready to boom. Yep. Um, you know, whilst many of the competitors are tightening the hatches or cutting back on operating costs and getting back to basics, you know, now's the time to, to gain market share. So, you know, as much as it's a challenge, I think it's also a big opportunity right now. So true. I think, you know, I've speaking to a lot of my clients and, and like the opportunities are, are, are still out there, right? You might need to change your strategy a little bit, but there's so many different opportunities out there where, where the masses just go, oh, I'll put my head in the sand and it's doom and gloom. You know, I've got this, I've got, I've got the, I've got Easter, then Anzac Day, and then election. Oh, I'll, I'll come back in July. It's like, no, no, there's so much that we can, we can create in these, even this short couple of months. Um, like you've had some huge wins along the way, right? Some really great moments and some really aha moments. What are some of those wins that have really shaped you and put you on, on your path? Probably, probably the biggest one is um, that's kind of blown me away, so to speak, is the exposure that I've already been able to achieve in a relatively short period of time. So things like being featured in the Australian Financial Review, I never thought would happen. Yeah. Right? You know, Australian property investor, smart property investment, all these platforms and all these media channels, you know, and I guess the only real strategy I've had behind it is, you know, it's been focused on leverage using, you know, media, workshop, seminars, I just feel that it's the fastest way to generate awareness of my brand yeah. outside of large-scale paid advertising. Yeah, awesome. That is so good. Now, you've been involved with teams and you've got an amazing team yourself. What did you realize, like looking out there in the industry, looking at within yourself, what are those, those attributes that makes those winning and championship teams, do you feel? I think there's a, there's a correlation between teams, whether it be sport or business or any industry, right? I think the big things are communication, yep. um, focus, you know, keeping the team focused, strong leadership. Um, you know, you're only as good as your weakest link and you need a strong leader in there to, to pull everyone across. Um, support, supporting your team is a big one. Yeah. And last but not least, and I think this one gets forgotten a lot, in times of doom and gloom or when everyone's so busy is have fun. Yeah. You know, go out and do some team events, just get the team to shut off from work for a while and just, you know, have some fun. Um, yeah. And I think where most business owners fail is just not putting time or energy into focusing in creating these championships teams. So true. So true. Now being a leader, obviously within yourself, with, with, with what you've created, personally within your own personal fortune and also with the business, there's some, some leaders out there, as you said, they, they go, they shut the gate and when it's doom and gloom, they just shut off altogether. And you mentioned about having fun, which is, I think it's so important out there, particularly with leaders of today. But how do you keep, as a leader, how do you keep your mindset in the game? How do you keep your own focus? What are some of the strategies that, that you do to enable you to stay on track? Oh, well, I guess, the way, the way I view leadership, right, is imagine for a moment a, a pyramid, which is the company org chart. You know, at the top of the pyramid is the CEO or the, the leader. Below that is managers and below that business support staff. In my opinion, the way I look at it is a good, lead, a good leader is one that flips that chart upside down. So it now has the leader at the bottom yeah. holding up, supporting, encouraging, motivating the rest of the team, the managers, the business support staff. I think that is the key to, you know, good leadership. And I think when when we come from that aspect, that's so true, right? Because when we come from that aspect, there's no time or there's no distractions to to take us down the rabbit holes and to think of the doom and gloom. If you're there truly, as you said, truly supporting your team, then there's everything's still moving in, in the right direction. But as you said, when you when most businesses flip it and the leaders at the top, it's a very lonely place at the top, right? And so you can go down those those certain rabbit holes and, and, and get lost, which is which is so true. Um, obviously, you've got to, and, and you can sorry, and you can learn so much about your business by talking to your staff. Yeah, 
So true. You know, they're they're at the front line, right? They 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 can see and know so much more about your business when it comes to the day to day operations and the interactions with clients. Yeah, so um, you know, so it, true. it's a crucial part. Now, what about mentors? You've had some great mentors and you've attended some great workshops in the past. Who are some of those mentors that have really, you know, uh, assist you on on your journey? So I actually have five business mentors that I speak to on a very regular basis um, and they cover everything from successful real estate um, owners to business operators. You know, I've got a sales mentor. I've got a business mindset mentor, which is incredible. Um, And I guess the big takeaways I get from them is not only learning from a core group of highly successful, successful people who can provide specific advice on my business but also having a team of people around me that can hold me accountable and keep me on track to achieve my business goals you know you can't make excuses to them like you can to yourself if you're holding yourself accountable so true it's, it's like that mastermind group isn't it where it's like you know i'm gonna gotta bear bear it all and i'm gonna go in and face the music even though it may be good or it may not be good but hey these guys are girls have given up their time and energy to support me so the least I can do to, to really play all out and, and, and do what I say I'm going to do. So true. So true. So now, obviously, if you were to give, say, three pieces of advice to the tribe, the listeners out there around helping them grow their business, because you've had some great success, what would be, what would be those three pieces of advice you would give them? I would say focusing on providing value, value and more value. You know, if, if your clients can walk away confidently knowing that the value they received was far more than the price they paid, you know, those clients will forever be advocates of your business. Um, the second one is probably just to take action. You know, too many people live in fear of failure that they just freeze and don't take action. Um, and then a big one for me is to schedule time out. You know, it's so easy to get caught up working seven days a week, 12 hours a day when you own your own, your own business. Mm. But it's not good for you. It's not good for your family. I don't think it's good for the business either because you can't run at optimum performance working such long hours. Yeah. And as one of my mentors always says, that to-do list will still always be there and it will be there for the next 30 years. So true. So true. So true. Um so what's coming up for you? What's what's the, the the next six months, two years look like for you? Where where does where does the journey look like? So the next two to three years is really about focusing on scaling my business, um, and that's going to be through creating efficiencies and you know automating processes um, and continually to focus on delivering superior value to my clients. Awesome. Love it, love it. And so where can the listeners find out more? Where can where can you send them? Where can they find out more information about yourself? It's on my website, jayanderson.com.au, um, or you can just search Jay Anderson Property on any of the social media platforms. Awesome, mate. Really appreciate your time, energy, and expertise today. Go out and check it out, jayanderson.com.au, and uh, some great information there. He's all over the social, so uh, – Reach out, say hi, and uh, start following. Jay, really appreciate your time, mate. Much, much appreciated. Thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure.